This is an overview video for College Trigonometry version 3 from Stitz and Zieger 10.4 Trigonometric Identities. The first theorem in this section is about even and odd functions, the even and odd identities. So as a reminder, even is when a function f of negative x equals f of x. And odd is when a function has the property f of negative x equals negative f of x. And what we can see is that we have cosine is an even function, as is its reciprocal secant. And all the other four of the six are odd functions. This can be seen a little more clearly with this diagram. So here we have positive theta, which we're using instead of x, and negative theta. Now this point and this point, this point's cosine of the positive theta and sine of the positive theta. And this one's cosine of the negative theta, sine of the negative theta. The location of this point, the x value is equal. So on this x axis, the x value of these two points are equal. The x value are the cosine. So the cosine of negative theta equals cosine of theta. Whereas the y value, here we have positive something, and here we have negative that same something. So the sine, the y values, are opposite of each other. So sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. The reciprocals follow the same pattern. So if you know one function is odd, then its reciprocal will also be odd. And then tangent, because it's made up of sine and cosine, when you divide tangent negative theta, if you divide sine negative theta and cosine negative theta, there's only one negative that appears outside because only one of the parts are odd, giving you that tangent is also odd. These are useful for simplifying. Okay, moving on. The sum and difference identities for cosine are critical ones for you to memorize. And they're not that hard to memorize. Really, these are the same equation, except for if when you have a plus, so you're doing cosine of a sum, you have a minus in the identity. So they're the opposite symbol. So cosine alpha minus beta is cosine, cosine, opposite symbol, sine, sine. So the pattern for the sum and difference for cosines is cos, cos, opposite symbol, sine, sine. This is an, a, a typical example. Find the exact value of cosine 15. Now because they say the exact value, we're not using our calculator. That would give us a decimal approximation. For 15 degrees, the only unit circle angle we have that ends with 5 is 45 degrees. That's the only one that we have memorized. So you could either think of cosine 15 degrees as cosine of 60 degrees minus 45 degrees, or you could do cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Either way. Both of these would work fine, but you have to utilize 45 to get that 15. 60 minus 45 is 15. You would then plug this for alpha and this for beta into your formula, and you'd be able to evaluate all of these because it's all based on unit circle stuff, and then simplify. For part two, they already broke this down. You just literally plug this value in for alpha and this theta in for beta, and inside you will have some cosine pi halves, and some sine pi halves. You could reduce those. Sine pi halves is 1, cosine pi halves is 0. And then you'd have cosine thetas and sine thetas, and you could reduce that and see what you get. The typical example of how do you use one of these identities. Now the co-function identities are also very useful. Cosine of pi halves minus theta equals sine of theta. Now these are called cofunctions because they are involving complementary angles, theta and pi halves minus theta add up to pi halves. Examples of complementary angles would be 30 degrees and 60 degrees, or 40 degrees and 50 degrees, or in radians pi thirds and pi sixths. So they all add up to 90 degrees or pi halves. What this is saying, these all these cofunction identities, is cosine of the first equals sine of the second, and vice versa. So cosine of 30 degrees equals sine of 60 degrees. Cosine of 40 equals sine of 50. Cosine of 50 equals sine of 40, etc., etc. 
It also works for secant and cosecant. It works for cotangent and tangent. Notice the co functions, sine and cosine. Secant and cosecant. Tangent and cotangent. That's why they are called the co functions as well as the complementary angles that are involved. The next identities are the sum and difference identities for sine. So we have sine of alpha plus beta equals sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So the pattern for sine of sum or difference is sine cos, same symbol, cos sine. So sine cos, same symbol, cos sine. This is another nice one to have memorized. Typical questions. Find the exact value of sine of 19 pi halves. Now the trick to this one is figuring out what two angles add up nicely to 19 pi halves. Now it definitely has to be halves. And then if you want to think through all the sums that give you 19, 19 and 0, that doesn't help much, 18 and 1. Now if I had 18 and 1, 18 pi halves and 1 pi half, I would have like 1 pi half. This is not a unit circle value, so I don't want that one. So I'm looking for values that give me unit circle. 17 and 2, 16 and 3 would work, 16 and 3, because those would both reduce with the 12 to make sixths or fourths, which are unit circle. So that would work fine. 15 and 4 would also work, I believe. So you just want to find some values that will reduce with the 12. So let's go 15 pi fourths, 12th, sorry, and 4 pi 12th. What this would be equal to then, if we just reduce 15 and 12 dividing by 3 would give us 5 pi fourths plus, and dividing by 4, pi thirds. Both of these values we can find with the unit circle what sine and cosine of both of these values are. So we can find the exact value for sine of 19 pi halves with our new identity and being able to figure out what to add up nicely to our 19 pi halves. The next one, if alpha is a quadrant 2 angle, sine, and beta is a quadrant 3 angle with tangent equals a certain value, find sine alpha minus beta. What I would love to see you do is to take this information, quadrant and sine alpha equals, and draw triangles. So a quadrant 2, there it is, alpha, quadrant 2, and sine is 5 thirteenths, so opposite over hypotenuse, 5 thirteenths. Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared, 169 minus 25 is 144, square root of that is 12, and this one's negative. The reason why it's negative is because we're left. This one's up, 5, and the hypotenuse is always out from the origin, so it's always positive as well. Now that we have this, I can work out sine alpha and cosine alpha because I have the little triangle worked out. This book uses more identities to solve these, and it's a little bit longer. So this next one, beta is in quadrant 3. If I wanted to make a quadrant 3 beta, that's what it would look like. And tangent beta is 2. That would be 2 over 1, opposite over adjacent. And then 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, so square root of 5. And then this is left, and this is down. So those would both be negative. Now tangent would still be positive, too, because the negatives would cancel. But we want to make sure that if, if it's left, we have negative. And if it's down, we have negative. Again, hypotenuse is out. It's always positive. Now that we have that triangle, we could work out sine and cosine of beta. So now, using this information and our identity, we can just work through this value. I'm not going to do part three. But this is the kind of examples that you will see for the sum and difference of sine. Excellent. Knowing the sine and the cosine sum and difference angles, you can just divide those to get the tangent sum and difference angle, or if you prefer, you can have this other version memorized. The benefit is if you know just tangents, you can use the tangents to find the sum and difference of tangents. So this is just all the formulas, the sum and difference in one spot. The double angle identities. You can use the sum angle identities to verify these and work these out. Now, cosine 2 theta 
The most common one is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And that's the only one that I have memorized because I can work from that one to these other versions. And a quick demonstration is worth your time. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. If I replace cosine squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta, which is the Pythagorean identity, that would equal 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. This is how we can get this other version without memorizing. If instead I converted the minus sine squared to 1 minus cosine squared and simplified that one, that would give me 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And that's your other version. So you don't have to memorize these other versions. You just memorize one and use the fundamental Pythagorean identities one at a time to get the other two. It's a great way to go. Sine 2 theta. is 2 sine theta cosine theta. If you needed to, you could write sine 2 theta as sine theta plus theta and then use the previous sum angle identity to work with this and you would get your final identity pretty quickly. And we have our tangent 2 theta. Notice it has a tangent squared in it. These are some more identities and they're used in similar ways in the homework. The power reduction formulas, these are very useful in calculus. And they are cosine squared equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta and sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine 2 theta. They're both in terms of cosine 2 theta. They both have a 1 and the 2. The only difference is the symbol. Cosine squared has the plus, sine squared has the minus. The half angle formulas if you were to take a look at this cosine squared and square root it, you would basically have this formula. But instead of theta, they're working with theta halves, so instead of 2 theta, it's theta. These half angle formulas are useful to find values that, for example, we know the exact value of 45 degrees, so we could find the cosine of 22.5 degrees with these half angle formulas and find the exact answer. When you're working with these angles, if you start out with a second quadrant angle, you're going to need to find the theta divided by 2. What quadrant that is in will tell you whether you need a plus or minus. Finally, in this section, they go over the product to sum formulas and the sum to product formulas. These formulas are not taught in our course, so don't worry about trying to memorize these.